So, Doctor. Uh, Bain. Yes, okay, Dr. Bean. Uh, well, you, you, you made it. Nice flight. So as Mr. Bean uh, reminds us in this little clip, first impressions uh, are very important, and there's nothing worse, perhaps, than an awkward introduction. So uh, in this speech, I want to um, practice the power of a good introduction. In this video, I'm going to talk about the assignment for speech number one. Um, to be prepared for this video, I'd like you to have downloaded the speech one prompt that you see here uh, and go ahead and take a look at it. I'm not going to read this word for word here uh, and instead I'm going to just kind of abstract the key information as I talk about it. So um, let's begin. I'm going to pull up this presentation here. A little easier to look at. All right, so this is a speech of introduction, and the goal is to introduce yourself and your culture. Here's the basic assignment description. Uh, this is to be a three to five minute extemporaneously delivered speech. Um, you can read about what extemporaneous delivery is uh, in our course textbook. I'm going to just bring that up for a second uh, on page 137. Um, extemporaneous speaking is the presentation of a carefully planned and rehearsed speech spoken in a conversational manner using brief notes. This allows you to be perceived as knowledgeable and credible because you know the speech well enough that you do not have to read it. You're just being guided by your note cards. You're able to establish and maintain eye contact with the audience. You're allowing yourself some flexibility and some natural conversational tones and um, styles in your delivery. Um, and you're allowing yourself to be able to delete, add, and rephrase your text uh, each time you deliver the speech. Okay. Um, so three to five minute extemporaneously delivered speech uh, where I want you to introduce yourself to an imagined audience of your professional peers. And what you're going to do is you're going to tell this audience about a culture, community, and social scene that you belong to and in particular, what that culture, community, or social scene means to you personally. So this is a very personal speech. Uh, you are revealing yourself to an audience for the first time. The general purpose then, of course, is to introduce yourself and your culture. Okay, so what do I mean by culture in this speech? Uh, well, um, culture can be understood as our homeland, our ethnicity, or our ancestral background, uh, but it also can be something that's a lot more commonplace than that. Um, we might use the concept of co-cultures. Co-cultures uh, are groups of people who share similar activities, behaviors, values, mindsets, or dress. Um, another way to think about this is that it's your group affiliation. You know, who are you spending your time with? Uh, what are you spending your time doing? So for this speech, you should be focused on uh, telling us about your membership in some sort of group from large national ethnic identities, uh, such as Salvadorian or Black American culture, to smaller, uh, what we might call social scenes, like a slam poetry team or lowrider enthusiasts. Um, so that's, that's what I mean here uh, by culture. Uh, so how is this speech uh, not an informative speech? Uh, you, your purpose, right, remember, is to introduce yourself um, so there is an informative aspect to it, um, but I want to distinguish this from the next speech, which is speech number two, an informative speech. In speech number two, I'm going to ask you to research a topic outside of yourself uh, deeply, right? Dig deep into that topic, uh, consult outside credible sources, and then teach us that topic in an organized and clear fashion. That's the goal for the next speech. Uh, you're, you'll be acting much more like a teacher or a reporter um, or um, maybe uh, somebody who is uh, briefing uh, a government 
uh, official. Uh, so your goal in, in speech number two is to talk about a subject outside of yourself in a deep fashion. Uh, whereas speech number one is just a personal introduction, right? So you're the topic. Your cultural self is the topic. There's no outside research that's required. And remember, this is the context of, of you introducing yourself to an audience who doesn't know you, right? So this is to be a very personal speech, whereas the informative speech uh, is more formal and impersonal. So how is this not a persuasive speech? Well, that's a good question, too. Uh, unlike the third speech, which is persuasive and will have you trying to uh, solve a problem by telling us, in particular, what to do, um, but a persuasive speech could also tell us what to believe or what to value, uh, in this speech, you're going to avoid argumentation and debate. You're not trying to convince us of anything other than that you're an interesting person and that the culture you belong to uh, is interesting and valuable to you. Okay, so speech three, save problems and solutions and trying to address social problems and solve them and persuade us to take certain actions. Save that for speech number three. In this speech, I want you to picture yourself in a particular situation talking to a particular audience. So imagine you've, you've joined a new class, a new organization, maybe it's a new club, or you've been hired for a new position at a company, and that company or organization has asked you to formally introduce yourself to, to the group. So your new group values diversity, and they're asking all the members that join the group to speak about their cultural backgrounds in their introductory speech. So imagine that you're going to give this speech uh, in a medium-sized room uh, before, again, this is an imagined audience, I'll explain further in a second, of 20 or so of your diverse peers. So I want you to imagine you're talking to people um, that, that are in this new organization or club, and they're diverse, uh, but they're around your age and your interests and um, et cetera. Uh, you will stand in front of the room uh, without the use of a podium or any obstructions between you and your audience. And while you must stand stationary because the group intends to record you, uh, the audience, remember, will be spread out in front of you. This will require you to slightly turn your body at times to bring your eye contact to at least 45 degrees to each side throughout the speech in a natural and sociable manner. Okay, so uh, to review... Your explicit audience, what the textbook refers to as your explicit audience, who you're talking to, is going to be a group of imaginary peers. What the textbook calls an implicit audience is going to be the culture that you belong to. They're implicit because they're not in the room, but what you say does matter to other people who belong to the same group as you. So you've got to be responsible to them as well. Uh, however, when you're actually recording your speeches, uh, remember to review the audience rules and remember that the actual audience that I'm asking you to gather to record your speech should be whatever number of people you can safely gather. I'm encouraging you to have at least one person. Some sort of audience will generally improve your skills as you practice public speaking. If there's no audience, you might not make much improvements, and then when you get in front of an actual audience, you're starting uh, right uh, from square one. So the actual audience that will be there when you're recording your speech should be whatever number you can safely gather, but I'd like you to uh, have some sort of audience. Time for this speech, as I mentioned, is three to five minutes. Uh, that goes from the attention getter. Uh, the very first thing that should be out of your mouth when you start the speech, not the recording, but when you start the speech, should be the attention getter to your speech. So you don't start by saying, hi, how are you, or any other kind of casual uh, limping into the speech. I want you to start with a bang uh, with the attention getter, and then I'm going to measure your time starting with that attention getter all the way to the point where you make your closing line. <clears throat> okay, I want to talk a bit about the organization of this speech. Uh, 
For speech number one, I'm just asking you to use a basic organization strategy of introduction, body, and conclusion. When we get to speeches two and three, um, how you organize the body of the speech will also have an organizational strategy that's required for it, but I'll save that for speeches two and three. Uh, for now, I just want to talk about uh, what you need in terms of introduction, body, and conclusion in speech number one. For your introduction, uh, you need to have two items. Again, the attention getter should be the very first thing you say uh, when you start the speech. And then a thesis statement. We're reading about thesis statements in our book. We have a thesis statement assignment coming up uh, where I'm going to ask you to write a thesis statement for this speech. And I'm going to assess that thesis statement. The thesis statement should be a single, full, declarative grammatically correct sentence that states the main idea of your speech. I'll try to give you some uh, examples uh, in the uh, speech assignment, uh, excuse me, in the thesis assignment uh, when, when you get to that. So take a look at the thesis assignment, which is coming up, and you'll see some examples of potential thesis statements there. As far as the conclusion goes, you'll also need two things for your conclusion. Uh, one is some sort of like summarization of your speech where you reinforce the overall purpose and main idea of your speech. Uh, consider this a kind of a review. You're reinforcing what you already talked about. And then uh, lastly, I'd like you to end your speech with a very powerful and practiced closing line. Uh, so the speech should not end with you saying, uh, well, that's all I really have to say, or this is the end of my speech now, or even thanking your audience as the closing line. If you want to thank your audience, do it before the closing line, and then end on that powerful, punchy, and well-performed closing line. As far as the body goes for your speeches, uh, it's really going to be up to you. Uh, I don't have any requirements for how you organize the body in this speech. We're just going to start slow here with a basic introduction body conclusion. Um, so there is no formal organization of the body that is required for the speech, but it may be useful for you to begin practicing the use of main points, as that will be assigned for the next speeches. Uh, for example, it may be helpful for you to look at a culture or co-culture that you belong to, narrow it down to a few key components, and then organize those components in a way that is logical to an audience outside of the culture that you're talking about. Uh, these selected components could comprise the body or main points of your speech. You may want to focus on maybe the values of your culture, the rules of your group, the artifacts that your culture um, values, rituals they perform, ceremonies, the language they use, the practices that unite the group. Uh, what makes your culture unique? Try to organize that thoughtfully into main points. As far as note cards go for this speech, you can and should use note cards um, and you, you may not use a full script or a piece of paper. Um, you should use two three inch by five inch note cards. Okay, so you can use one if you just want. You can use two. Uh, you can use both side of each of those note cards. So a full, total of four surfaces. Uh, on those note cards, you should have clear, very large and visible. You want to be able to see it kind of from your waist so that you don't have to hold your cards up close to your face. Clear, large, and you can use handwriting since we don't have access to printers on campus at the moment, but ideally you would use printer font so that you're not uh, thrown off by your own sloppy handwriting. <laughs> um, on the note cards then, use light, large writing and Keep it to only very brief keywords and phrases. Do not use full sentences on your note cards. Remember, your note cards are just prompting your memory. You are not to read word for word from your note cards. Uh, glance down infrequently to assist your memory and keep your place. Speech from a full script 
or reading your speech heavily from your note cards could result in a pretty big de de deduction of points from your delivery score. When recording and delivering your speech, um, make sure you review the speech recording rules that are in the syllabus and were discussed in the syllabus video. Uh, review those. Make sure you know those. Uh, remember that the camera should remain stationary uh, throughout the speech, so don't zoom in, don't pan it around. Just ideally you'd set it on a um, tripod or, or something that would allow it to remain stationary. You're going to stand for the entirety of your speech and you should stand free of any obstructions. Don't use a podium, don't use countertops, etc. <clears throat> and let me just give you a brief description. Oh, well, oh, sorry, I need to see and hear you clearly, right? So stand in the middle of the frame and make sure I can uh, see you from the waist up. Uh, let me give you just a brief description of how the typical video should start. Okay, you're going to start recording. You're going to state your name and the assignment. Then you're going to show your note cards clearly and carefully to the camera. Show each one so that I can evaluate it. Take your time with this. Show your audience uh, if there is an audience. Remember, I do want you to have some sort of audience. And if you can't, you need to email me and let me know ahead of time. So show your audience. Uh, then pause, take a deep breath. And you're, when you're ready to begin your speech, Begin your speech with your attention getter right away with the creative, powerful attention getter. Uh, and then you speak your whole speech. You end your speech with the closing line. You pause as if to receive applause or maybe actually receive applause. And you could tell your audience, you know, it's okay to applaud you. And you should end your speech without saying something along the lines of, and that's my speech, etc. Show your cards one last time to the audience so that I can verify that that's what you actually used during the speech. And uh, then end your recording. Do not edit your video. Um, and again, review those speech recording rules. Uh, in addition to those speech recording rules, there's a sample video in the speech recording module uh, of a former student's speech that will show you exactly how the recording should look. So take a look at that, that video of the sample speech. As far as an outline goes for speech number one, it's not required uh, for speech number one. So there's no grade for the outline for speech number one. Now you may want to start practicing how to do an outline now because we will be doing it for a grade in speeches two and three and I'll explain the outlining format for those when we get closer. Um, but for now, uh, you might want to take a look at, I, did, I included a sample outline in the Speech 1 Assignment Instructions module, and that will give you a good idea of how this first speech might look for you. So take a look at the sample outline that I provide, and at the very least, prepare your mind for outlining for speeches 2 and 3. Last thing I want to do is show you the rubric, and I'm just going to go to the assignment prompt for that. Uh, so the, here's the assignment prompt. Uh, and at the end of it, there's a rubric that will tell you exactly how I intend to evaluate your speeches. And just so if you don't understand how a rubric works, let me give a basic explanation. Uh, over here, it's going to list uh, what the skill is that I'm looking for. So I'm looking for you to have attention getters in your introduction, a thesis statement in your introduction, reinforce the purpose in the conclusion and provide a closure in the conclusion. Okay, and then up here, I rank the different descriptions of the quality of each of these items as three, accomplished. That's what you want. You want to be accomplished. You want to get the most number of points. Uh, two, developing. Uh, you're not quite there yet. And one, you're just beginning. Uh, zeros would be if it's missing or really egregious uh, in, in not accomplishing the goals. Okay, so then there's a verbal description in each that will uh, show you what I'm looking for very clearly. So treat this like a checklist 
of the things you need to have and do in your speech. And if you do all of them, you'll do well. Okay, if you meet all these things in the accomplish box, even if your speech isn't, you know, the most inspiring or interesting speech, you'll get a high grade because you follow the instructions and you are practicing the things that I'm asking you to practice. All right, so I'm going to leave it at that. If you have any questions about this assignment, remember that the Common Course Question Board is where you want to take this. Good luck on speech number one.